Good morning students. Today I will show you another important viscera of the head neck region that is a composite viscera which is consisting of the tongue and larynx with trachea and pharynx with esophagus. And I will show you first of all to uh, the how to hold this specimen in anatomical position. Then I will discuss the parts of this specimen one by one. Let us see the specimen. This is a specimen, composite specimen consisting of the tongue, this is the tongue. Then posteriorly you can see the part of the larynx, anteriorly you can see the part of the larynx by means of different cartilage of the larynx and it is continued as the trachea and the trachea bifurcates here and behind the trachea and larynx is the pharynx and esophagus is a muscular tube on the posterior side. So, three main important structures we can see in this composite specimen one is the tongue then larynx with trachea and pharynx with esophagus. How to hold this specimen? I have to hold the specimen in this way so that the tongue it is forward and the larynx and trachea is front and pharynx and esophagus behind it is hanging downwards. So, this is the anatomical position of the composite specimen of head neck region which is consisting of tongue, larynx, trachea, pharynx, esophagus. Let us discuss one by one. First of all the tongue. Yes, this is tongue. You know tongue it is a muscular organ inside the oral cavity and partly in the posterior side and this tongue having different parts. This anterior part is called the tip of the tongue, this one tip and posterior side is called the base of the tongue or rather posterior one third of the tongue is called the base of the tongue. This is two lateral margin or lateral border, these two and among the surface, this is one surface called dorsal surface and on this surface called ventral surface or under surface. On the dorsal surface, you can see here there is a midline, there is a small depression. That depression is called the foramen cecum. From the foramen cecum, this one, this is foramen cecum. From the foramen cecum to furrow or lines, they are extending from the foramen cecum to the lateral margin. That sulcus is called sulcus terminalis. It is a V-shaped sulcus. This is one limb. Then foramen cecum and the limb. So, V-shaped sulcus in front of this V-shaped sulcus is called the oral part of the dorsal surface. And behind the V-shaped sulcus, this part is called the pharyngeal part of the dorsal surface. So, dorsal surface having two parts is the ventral two-third in front of the sulcus terminalis and foramen cecum is called the oral part and the posterior part of the dorsal surface is called the pharyngeal part and in front of this v shaped sulcus terminalis there are some rounded elevations and they are also parallel to this v shaped sulcus 8 to 12 in number and these are called the valid papilla. Next is what are the papilla of the tongue? Here you see the large size papilla called the valid papilla. This is one valid papilla and the valid papilla. So, there are 8 to 12 valid papilla in front of the sulcus terminalis. So, these are the parts of the anterior tooth of the tongue and this papilla in shape they are truncated the base upwards and the apex it is inside the substance of the tongue and this papilla contain taste buds. Other papilla is the fungiform papilla which are present usually on the sides of the tongue and they are less in uh, number in compared to the filiform papilla 
and this papilla also having taste buds and throughout the tongue dorsal surface of the tongue in the anterior two third there are small projection of papilla due to which the tongue is velvety and rough that papilla is called the filiform papilla but this filiform papilla do not contain the taste buds and the papilla on the lateral margin of the tongue three or four folds are there in front of sulcus terminalis they are called folate papilla this folate papilla also having taste buds so there are four types of papilla ballet papilla fungiform papilla filiform papilla and folate papilla of these four types of papilla the filiform papilla is having no taste buds in other three papilla you will get the uh, taste buds so because of this presence of papilla the anterior two third of the tongue also called the papillary part that means there are so many differences between the anterior two third and posterior one third of the tongue i will discuss that part also afterwards and another part of the tongue is the root of the tongue by which it is attached to the mandible and the muscle which is from the root of the tongue is the genioglossus muscle the genioglossus muscle it forms the root of the tongue so all together there are few parts apex base and the dorsal surface ventral surface to lateral margin and one root yeah. then what are the different uh, differences between the ventral 2/3 and dorsal 1/3 of the dorsal surface of the tongue the demarcation between the two parts is a sulcus terminalis foramen cecum and these two sulcus so in ventrally here you see there is a mucous membrane but there is no submucous coat but posteriorly there is mucous membrane with submucous coat because of absence of submucous coat in the ventral part the mucous membrane it is fixed with the underlying muscles but here the mucous membrane is lax secondly this part it contains the papilla but this posterior one third does not contain the papilla instead here you will get the lymphoid follicles called lingual tonsil but this lymphoid follicles again absent in the ventral part this part it is supplied by the lingual nerve general sense and special sense by the coracoidal nerve but on the posterior third it is both general and special sense it is carried by the glossopharyngeal nerve this part it is velvety this part it is irregular because the velvety is due to the presence of the different papilla but here is irregular or elevations due to the presence of lymphoid follicles here in the posterior one third so these are the important differences between the anterior two third and posterior one third uh, in addition developmentally also the ventral part it develops from the first branchial arch and posterior part it develops from the third and fourth branchial arch but on the under surface if you see here called the ventral surface here there is no posterior part only the ventral part is here here there is a mucus fold in the midline this, this is called ferulum lingui the fold of mucus membrane in the midline and other structures on each side of ferulum lingui you will get the papilla then opening of the submandibular duct deep lingual veins all these structures will get on other side of the femoral lingui if the femoral lingui which is a fold of mucous membrane if it is short then the term is called the tongue tie in that case the tongue cannot be moved freely because of shortening of the femoral lingui so all these are important anatomical uh, parts and features of the tongue